Visitors to New York's Times Square this winter are in for a bit of a surprise. Crazy people will be shooting at them. Okay. Ugh. A Swedish Bond girl, Britt Eklund, told Piers Morgan this week that she was seduced by Warren Beatty after the legendary Lothario took her to an X-rated movie for their first date. This is what I have to say about that. Hey, Warren, stop stealing my moves. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite this week. Some gold-plated chains would make a nice retirement gift for a very, very good slave. <laughs> Well, this Are was, you serious? Well, this was written. Are you serious? This was written years Did ago. Did you just write that? I didn't write Did it. Did you just say that? No, I read it. Yes. You read that? <laughs> it was an old. It was. President Clinton said that if Dr. King were alive today, he would have supported the deployment of U.S. troops to Bosnia. Later, when asked how he could use the late civil rights leader's name in such a self-serving manner. Clinton hopped a plane to England and lit up a big fat joint. <laughs> hey, for the ninth consecutive year, uh, Nick, JetBlue Air, Airlines ranked first for satisfaction among all North American airlines. But you know what ranked least in satisfaction? 9-11 Airlines. <laughs> what a terrible name for an airline. It reminds me of that tragedy. <laughs> oh, 9-11. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, don't laugh at 9 11. What? 9 11. I tried to tell him not to go, laugh. Adam? I know. I walked through blood and bones in the streets of Manhattan trying to find my brother. Jesus. Yeah, he was in northern Canada. <laughs> Sapphire called the First Lady a, quote, congenital liar. Clinton responded by saying Sapphire, quote, deserves a pop in the nose. Sapphire replied by offering to fight Bill Clinton, quote, anytime, any place. <laughs> the president answered, quote, how about right now? Then hopped a plane to England and lit up a big fat joint. <laughs> Why is there an app for everything except how to rape a baby? <laughs> Jesus. All joking aside, I know you love to joke, Bob Dole, you know, but that guy, he's a war hero, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's, he gave his, his uh, arm for his country. You know, he went through all these debilitating injuries during the war for his country. It was great. And in all fairness, though, Bill Clinton also, he had a, a kind of some war injuries. Really? You know? Yeah. When he was in England there during the Vietnam War, I heard he... Uh, <laughs> I heard he, uh, he had a bad injury. He burned his mouth on a bomb. Really? Are That's you currently in a relationship or are you playing the field? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what, the, what the fuck? What are you, retarded? Are you, no, are you really having a relationship? <laughs> come on. Come on. Me. Come on. I'm serious. And, of course, it was very inspiring to see President Clinton up here on crutches making a speech. I mean, I thought that was just uh, amazing, you know, uh, I mean, it's been difficult for the president. You know, he can't jog now, and uh, he needs help getting around. And he still, you know, he still uh, occasionally suffers great pain, you know. Uh, on the upside, you got your medical marijuana, so that's, uh, you know. <laughs> you must inhale, sir. It's the only way you're going to get better. It's... A frog goes into a bank to get a loan. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> so the frog goes up to the lady, and she has a little name tag on, as they do. It says Whack. So her name is Mrs. Whack. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, can I uh, get a loan? Well, I don't know. You're, you're a frog. Well, I want a loan. Well, what's your name? Kermit. You're not Kermit the Frog. No, no, no. I was named after him. The name's Kermit Jagger. My father's Mick Jagger, and my mother's a frog. He fucked a frog. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm his offspring. Is it? Well, anyways, I want a loan. 
Uh, for a lily pad. <laughs> well, you can't, I don't know if you can have one. Do you have any collateral? Well, I have this. The frog pulls out a, a little sh shiny pink elephant. You know, and a little shiny pink elephant. So Mrs. Wack looks at it. And her name's Patty. I don't think this is much collateral, you know. But I'll talk to the bank manager about it, you know. There's a fro frog out there, Kermit Jagger, gave me this damn thing. Did you know, have any idea what this is? The bank manager says, <laughs> what is this? This is a knick-knack, Patty Whack. <laughs> Give the frog a loan, his old man's a rolling stone. <laughs> this is cool. So the news, we're going to talk about That's the news. Right. So we have uh, yeah. business news. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg is facing a one billion dollar uh, a one billion dollar tax bill this year. Now that's uh, he pays a billion dollars in taxes. In tax, that's uh, that's a lot of money. Good problem to have, right, yeah. Tom? That's not bad. <laughs> God damn! Absolutely, a billion that's dollars. A billion dollars. That's more than my dad made in his lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, this guy's carping about that. How old is this guy? I, I don't know. I think he's in his mid 20s, maybe. Yeah, to look damn. It up. Um, and most of these, I think, I feel these rich kids are unknown. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's known because of that movie. Yeah. But, uh, but I think most of them, I think that these super billionaire guys keep themselves unknown so we don't find out and go to their house. Oh, yeah. Don't he's probably not the real, you know, he's just sort of like the, you know, there's, there's, there's much bigger billionaires. You think there's bigger days. guys? Oh, I think there's, they're, yeah, they're living on an island somewhere. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. They're just running everything. Because when you hear about it, how much money the richest guys have, yeah. nobody, I mean, I'm an, I know Sandler, he doesn't have nearly that much money, you yeah. know what I mean? And he's the richest guy, and he's super rich. Yeah, if, you're, if, you're, if you were, if you had, you know, you probably don't want to make a big show. If you're, no. Yeah, they probably have the cure for cancer. They're probably selling all the, you know, all the drugs that we're all taking, all the drugs. They're selling all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. They got all the cures. They're living on an island. Oh, yeah. some of them are well, those are the motherfuckers that fucking introduced crack into my neighborhood last month. <laughs> you have a crack problem? Or well, now I do, because really? those fuckers, those, those fuckers introduced crack into the neighborhood. Really? And what they don't tell you about crack is, god damn, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Where in your neighborhood there's a crack? Yeah, it's huge crack. So you can just problem. step out the front door now, and there's a crack readily available now. Well, I sell it. Yeah. But so, but I, I'm using so much of it now. Yeah. But I'm still getting fat. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I don't quite understand. How is that understand. even possible? I don't know. I was going to ask you that. I have to that. talk to a gastroenterologist. You, you don't have any now, do you? Any of the, any crack now? Oh or? no, I don't know. No, well, after it all. you do it for a while, you do not share. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I learned that one the hard way. You go, way. I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> but meanwhile, you're not out, yeah. and you do everyone else's crack with them. Yeah, and then you sneak off into the bathroom and do your own crack. Right. Yeah, just good idea. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> morphine's good too. There's one called crocodile. Have you ever heard of crocodile? No, I'm, I haven't. In international news. <laughs> Last week on Larry King Live, Marlon Brando made the shocking statement that Hollywood is, quote, run by Jews. In response, outraged Jewish organizations made it snow in New York in April. I met, Hello. in the airport, I met uh, Matlock. Uh, Matlock is uh, Andy Griffin. Yeah, Andy he used to call himself Andy Griffin, now he goes by Ben Matlock. <laughs> <laughs> really calls himself Ben Matlock. But, uh, so, uh, yeah, I went into the airport, and he was in there, and you know the bookstores they have in the, in the, in the oh, airports? yeah, yeah, sure. So he's in there, he's reading a big, one of the big thick mm. books, you know, mm -hmm. smart guy, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm standing over there, I'm, I look, I'm leafing through a Jughead comic, I see him over there. <laughs> so I think to myself, I say, hey, I'm going to sidle up beside uh, old Ben Matlock. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to grab one of them big books myself. He didn't have to know nothing. Sure. Pretty soon we get in a conversation. Mm -hmm. We start talking. And, uh, and I, I find out uh, how he ever solved that case where Claude, uh, Claude Aikens killed. You remember, anyways. Whatever. <laughs> I wanted to talk to right. him. Right. Uh -huh. So uh, take 10 minutes. I'm talking to him. I'm talking to him. He's very friendly, very mm -hmm. outgoing, and everything like that. 
and uh, it was really nice. Then all of a sudden I realized it wasn't Ben Matlock at all. Really? <laughs> it's not Andy Griffith? No, just some old man. And uh, <laughs> now, don't you think that this guy has a, a moral, you know, a responsibility to tell people instantly that he's not Matlock? <laughs> I don't know. That's, he that's a good question. I never thought of that. Finally, folks, next week, Jews everywhere will be celebrating the holiday of Yom Kippur. Or, as non-Jews refer to it, Wednesday. <laughs> this week in Minneapolis, the Minnesota Obesity Center officially opened. Its goals? To find ways to identify behaviors that lead to obesity. Also, it's a good place to meet fat chicks. <laughs> In New York this week, Sammy the Bull Gravano was sentenced to just five years in prison for committing 19 murders. You better be careful, though, because New York has just passed a tough new law. 20 strikes and you're out. <laughs> and finally, John Wayne Bobbitt is going to be an adult film star. He has been signed to play himself in the John Wayne Bobbitt story. The part of his severed penis will be portrayed by Polly Shore. <laughs> Do we know why people are gay? You don't know. Do you know why you're heterosexual? You don't know why. Uh, no, I don't know. Well, maybe the abnormal gene would be hetero. That's true. Uh -huh. Hey, maybe the normal right. gene would be uh, those maybe ladies that... Maybe it would be normal to be gay. ...that cut their cocks into vaginas. <laughs> no, if you're looking to make it in standard television, you're not going the right route. Oh, no, route. no, no. You're not going the right route. Here. Once we, no, once I get on There's, Hulu. You're not sending this tape to CBS, are you? No, once okay. I get on Hulu, the whole no. act changes. No, do you know that, that you are a cis male? Have you ever heard of that term? A what? cis male? Cis male. C-Y-S-M-A-L-A. -E. So what it means is that you are a man. You're born a man. Well, as far as you know. As far as I know. And you identify yourself as a man. Yes. That's a cis male. No, I don't understand. Where does that... Is this a new phrase? Yes. It's a way of marginalizing a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> Christy Brinkley told reporters this week that her marriage to Billy Joel was over long before their divorce. The key moment, she said, came when she realized that she was Christy Brinkley and that she was married to Billy Joel. Well, my family comes from Russia. They're Russian Jews. Oh. Russian and Jews is more like it. One of the biggest <laughs> anti-Semites I've ever met. <laughs> Russian away from Jews. I had a bar mitzvah. <laughs> what? I had a bar mitzvah, Norm. Yeah. You did? Yeah. Wait, are you Jewish? Yes. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I love, I love the Jewish people. <laughs> yeah. And Albert Fish was born on this day in New York City in 1870. Do you know the obituaries is concerning me? I'm a little right. worried because people are dying in alphabetical order. <laughs> Ooh, who the fuck is Albert Fish? What? Who the fuck is Albert Fish? Oh, Albert Fish? I've never heard of that guy. He was known as the Gray Man. The Grain Man? The Gray oh, the Man. Grain. The The Werewolf of Wisteria. Hmm. I, um... Yeah. You know why he was known as the Gray Man? Because when they... He was a serial killer. He, uh -huh. ki he yeah. killed... He, he slayed children and ate yeah. them. He's a cannibal. Uh-huh. But when they, the police asked a, a woman to describe him. And she said he was gray Man. in both appearances and demeanor. Mm. Very bad mm. description. This is like Arsenio when it was, ooh. Yeah, was, ooh. I, well, but anyways. I'm pretending I know who Albert Gray is, I didn't. No, no, Albert Fish. Oh. You're a New Yorker. So anyways, he was a child rapist and cannibal, as I explained. When he says child Jesus rapist, you try not Christ. to laugh when he looks at you. Oh, come on, like... man. <laughs> it's not funny. I know it's not, but I know, you, but I know you want people to laugh. But say, Fish whatever. boasted that he had children in every state. Now, I would not boast about that. I don't think you would. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think you'd do it, but if you did do it, you certainly wouldn't boast about not it. You, all, you'd keep the, take that to the grave with you, but he boasted. Well, they anyway, say they eventually so, all sing like a canary. They, they do say that? About murder as well. Yeah, they, yeah, all, right. they, they, they want, brag to a friend. Caught, right. yeah. When Norm brag... Oh, sh sorry. But Fish, this is interesting, Fish chose his victims. He only chose victims who were either mentally handicapped. Now, don't laugh at this next part. 
Please. But you know he wants you to, right? No. If you laugh at this next part. Okay. And I'm not Fish chose victims were either mentally handicapped or African American. <laughs> oh, come on. Why would you think that's funny? God damn, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was the worst part of the story. Okay. <laughs> But why do you think he did that? What would be the explanation? Why would he only attack? Why, why would his victims that he chose only be either mentally handicapped or African Americans? Because people don't, in those days, didn't care when those people were vanished. That's, that's you're right. thinking like right. Albert Fish now. <laughs> and prostitutes. That's why they kill that's right. prostitutes. Exactly. Right. That's Nobody right. really cares no. about prostitutes. Well, it's like that, that comedian that would rape people at comedy clubs, oh, no, in colleges. Yes, Vince Champ. They always said. His, his great gimmick was that people would think who did it, and they never, because he'd go on to another town that, and another college, but yeah. wouldn't people say, what about the comic? Yeah. Mm. Maybe the worst gimmick a comic ever had. <laughs> 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 but anyway, but you're exactly right. That's why Albert Fish killed only mentally handicapped <laughs> and <laughs> African Americans. What about, okay. I thought you'd laugh at African Americans again that they were. <laughs> no, because I, I know him. I know he'll do something. That's that's outrageous. How well, it's dare kind you? of outrageous for you. But anyways, uh, Fish tortured, mutilated, and murdered the youngsters. They were children, with a meat cleaver, a butcher knife, and a small hand saw. Oh, Jesus! God, you. This is the topical portion. Of yeah. To the birthdays. And then he solidified his reputation as the most vicious child slayer in criminal history. Oh, Though you know barely literate, Fish wrote taunting letters to the parents of his victims, gruesomely detailing Jesus. how he slayed, butchered, cooked, and then with great enjoyment dined on their offspring. He would inevitably declare that a child's roasted rump was the most toothsome dish in all of gastronomy. Gastronomy. Additionally, I, Fish was a, a masochist, get this, and he would insert wool doused with lighter fluid into his own anus and set it alight for his own enjoyment. Fish was finally arrested, and he immediately began confessing to killing 700 children. Get out of here. Yes, and he was, he was dizzyingly happy about it. Smiled as he described the grisly details of the tortures and the murders, appearing to the detectives. And one of the detectives said he appeared as the devil himself. I mean, uh, this Albert, the, I mean, this guy was a real jerk. <laughs> now I know there was no Albert Fish. And here I am, you know, I look out, I see President Bill Clinton, you know, I see Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, you know, media mogul Rupert Murdoch, you know, uh, broadcast legend Larry King, you know, uh, pornographer Larry Flint, you know, <laughs> Dick Morris, the list is starting to drop off a little, folks, but <laughs> still, you get the idea, it's daunting. I'll show you how they go. Mm -hmm. uh, Michigan, so you can do it to the camera or you can do it to me, it doesn't matter. Either. Michigan man Curtis Peterson received a 15 year prison sentence for having sex with his pet pit bull. <laughs> What's that, Lassie? Woof, woof. Grandpa got stuck in a well? Woof, woof. Oh, you got raped. <laughs> <laughs> they say the world's a smaller place than it used to be, but I think that's an optical illusion based on me becoming a big fat guy. <laughs> it's only now, if people were to Google a picture of Savile, uh -huh. knowing that he was a horrible um, pedophile and general all-round rotten person, that you'd look at it and you'd go, of course. I mean, now you look at it, yeah. yes, that makes perfect sense. I mean, with these like weird, he would I wear like weird, he would think he'd wear things a bit like this. I knew, the, <laughs> I knew the bit about the pedophile, but I didn't know about the all-around bad person part. Yes, well, I was, I, I suddenly realized that I couldn't remember all of his crimes. Yeah. So Let's say joke. Jimmy Savile goes into a, a room and a guy is like, you know, the person is, can't move, they're paralyzed. Yeah. And he doesn't act upon that person. <laughs> right. Who's to say it's bad? Yeah. 
That's me. Fella. I'll say it's bad. But the lady is just lying there. You think her life's, uh, you yeah. don't think that's, she's just lying there. All of a sudden, a great entertainer. A, a knight of the realm. Fucks her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even like you say, uh, you're uh, unwanted, uh, unwanted, W N T, uh, allegations against Michael Jackson. There had to be kids that were like, well, "This is pretty cool." <laughs> yeah. This is not some old priest. I'm just wondering about. I have a priest, by the way. Can I just ask that I'm because ca I'm, ca I'm not Catholic, but I know you a have priest. a priest anyway. I know a priest. Yeah. And I feel sorry for them because most of them don't fuck children. I yeah. just want to put that on the record that more teachers fuck children than priests, okay. and yet teachers are heroes and and. Finally, someone brave enough to say it, <laughs> which is great. There's Charles Woodson. How about that? Oh, what a season he had. Great, man. He, he became the first defensive player to win the Heisman Trophy. And congratulations, Charles. That is something that no one can ever take away from you. Unless you kill your wife and a waiter, in which case... <laughs> It's a word of advice. Have you ever done anything in your long and storied career that you consider specifically to be in bad taste as you look back on it? Maybe at the time you thought it was a good play, but you look uh, back on it and you think that was in bad taste. Well, sometimes, like in stand-up, I'll do jokes that are, uh, that I, th like one time I was doing this thing in San Francisco and they were all gay uh, people in the audience, they told me, so I figured I'd do In San Francisco? It. Yeah. No. <laughs> So I figured I'd do stuff about gay people so that they could relate to yeah, it. Yeah, it's warm up. Right. <laughs> they love that. And so I was talking about, because I went to this gay pride parade, and I saw in it there were these uh, old men and old ladies like with these uh, signs that said, we are proud of our gay son, you know? And so I was saying, that's an odd thing to be proud of, you know, because it's not an achievement, you know? It's not like something you work all your life to be gay or anything like that. And, I, I just wondered, I just, I, I had a hard time believing that these 50, 60 year old men are actually bragging, you know, at work like they're, hey, uh, Bill, you know, uh, my kid, oh my God, we're proud of him, Johnny. He uh, uh, graduated from Harvard, you know, a first in his class, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, now he's articling over at a law firm and, uh, oh yeah, he loves cock. <laughs> you know? This kid. He can't get enough cock in his mouth, his ass, his kid's always cock. I got a, I got a picture of the boy here sucking another man's cock. I want to show it to him. To watch the maturation of you as an artist, to realize it took you nine and a half minutes to get around to the sucking cock stuff. And in California, Christian Brando was released from state prison Monday after serving nearly five years for killing his sister's boyfriend. Meanwhile, his father, Marlon Brando, ate nine pizzas. <laughs> yeah, Ricky Lake, you know, uh, she is really is an animal lover, though. She has three cats, two dogs, and a big ass that follows her around everywhere. <laughs> out of time, but I would be remiss here if I didn't bring up something. People have been uh, bothering me about this for months and months. The People come on the show Euchre. and they say, when, the next time you see Norm MacDonald, he's got some tremendous stories about the great Bob Euchre. Now, do you have a story you can tell us about Bob Euchre? Voice well, Bob, of the Milwaukee Brewers. Well, Bob Euchre is, uh, is one of my best friends. He's a great man. I know Artie told a story <laughs> when he was here, and Bob was not too thrilled with that. But, uh, it's Artie Lang you're talking Artie about. Artie Lang, yeah. yeah. But uh, Bob is a very, very funny man, and, uh, and uh, I, I go, often go in the booth with him, you know. Oh, sure. So uh, one time we were there, <laughs> and uh, John Fogarty was in the mm -hmm. audience. Mm -hmm. You know, a fortunate son, you know. So uh, John Fogarty was there. So Bob Euchre is a very uh, interesting guy. He thinks of everybody as the same. He doesn't think of people as stars or anything like that. He's a very down-to-earth yeah. guy. So uh, he was talking to me, and he says, hey, man, you know that guy? I go, yeah. He goes, that's uh, John Fogarty, rock and roll singer. So I go, yeah. I go, yeah, yeah. I know who it is. He goes, yeah, man. He goes, uh, but I played in a golf tournament with him. He goes, you probably think of him as some that likes to bite the heads off of chickens, but uh, <laughs> this guy can. Uh,
<laughs> That's exactly how I think of him. This guy can get it out of the sand trap like nobody's business. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so he goes, he's got a hell of a set of pipes on him. Oh. He goes, uh, uh, come the seventh inning stretch, I'll have him up here. He'll sing for you. <laughs> so I said, no, no, Bob, don't do that. Like, don't have him come up and sing yeah. for me, please, you know? He goes, what's matter, man? Don't you even know who he is? He got all mad. <laughs> so I go, yes, Bob, I know who he is. He did Creedence Clearwater sure. Revival. Yeah. He goes, yeah, he did all that. <laughs> John Goodman has announced that he will not be returning to Roseanne next year. So how will the show get rid of him on screen? Well, insiders now say that over the last few episodes of the season, Roseanne will gradually eat him. <laughs> There is one country that worries me, though. Not Iraq, not Iran, not North Korea. The only country that really worries me is uh, the country of Germany. I don't know if you guys are history buffs or not, but... Uh... <laughs> In the early uh, part of the previous century, Germany decided to go to war. And uh, who did they go to war with? The world. <laughs> that had never been tried before. And uh, so you figure that would take about five seconds for the world to win, but uh, no, it was actually close.